welcome back to another video so uh, in this video we will be discussing about the topic uh, frequency response of an amplifier basically a transistor based amplifier so as you can see here uh, in this uh, area uh, the, the diagram is given here so this is a basic common emitter amplifier uh, so it is common emitter amplifier as you can see the emitter is common for both the input and output and uh, in this diagram we can we can see that there is two uh, resistors connected in the input side that is R1 and R2 which is potential divider circuit and uh, here the input is given here as a VS that's a supply a AC supply we are giving here across the resistor uh, the input side resistor we have RS that is a source side resistance and in the input side we can see a capacitor called C1 which is a coupling capacitor and uh, this input signal will come through this uh, capacitor in and then fed into the base and uh, as you can see in the collector side we have a collector resistance which is rc and uh, we have an applied VC, vcc in over the collector side and the current which is passing through the resistor is rc is ic and uh, in the emitter side as you can see the current flows through the emitter is ie and the resistor over there is uh, re that is emitter resistance and there is a capacitor which uh, goes through uh, a parallel to the resistor that is a bypass capacitor in the emitter side that is capacitor c2 and when where, from where we will took the output that is from the collector side we are taking the output uh, across this load resistance rl and the capacitor given in the output side is called a coupling capacitor so this is the overall uh, look of a common emitter amplifier so uh, we are we are talking about the amplifier frequency response so before that we should know what is an uh, amplifier so this is basically a common emitter amplifier now uh, the the consider uh, an amplifier uh, the most uh, uh, important application of a transistor based ampl ampl uh, amplifier is an audio frequency amplifier okay so we can uh, amplify the voice signals uh, most of the uh, time uh, we can able to amplify the audio signals using an audio frequency amplifiers and the frequency range is the audio frequency range is 20 gigahertz to, to 20 kilohertz that is the frequency of audio signals uh, that can be amplified with respect to uh, this particular amplifier so uh, if you are asking about the example for a common emitter i mean uh, a normal transistor based amplifier that is an audio frequency amplifier okay so uh, in in this audio frequency amplifier or an amplifier uh, there is a relation between uh, the gain and the frequency okay so the transistor gain and the frequency is related okay so that we will uh, that 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 particular relationship we can show it in a graphical representation that is called this frequency response okay so uh, the transistor based amplifier uh, the <coughs> sorry so the transistor based amplifier uh, the frequency response is shown here in the x-axis we will consider the frequency in the x-axis and uh, that is in a log scale and in the y-axis we will take the gain of the amplifier that is the voltage gain so voltage gain is nothing but av represented in av which is nothing but the output voltage divided by the input voltage so we are giving an input side in the emitter to base side as the input we are giving a signal and that particular voltage and we are getting some output in the output side that is your v out so the ratio between the output and input voltage is called the voltage gain so uh, this voltage gain versus frequency that particular uh, graph or this diagram is called uh, the frequency response because gain versus frequency that is the frequency response of the uh, amplifier so as you can see the gain versus frequency response will look like this uh, this particular graph and you can see that we are getting the maximum gain over here and this particular point we called it as av max or av mid mid frequency gain mid gain okay this is the maximum gain we are obtaining and that is uh, constant over this particular area it is constant and this is the mid frequency area because x axis we have frequencies so this mid frequency areas we can see that we are getting the maximum gain and that is constant over the y and uh, a particular range of frequencies and if you look at this particular point uh, from that point you can see the gain is dropping 
right from the mid frequency it comes to the lower frequency range this is zero so and when the lower frequency range you can see the gain is dropping and also from uh, this particular frequency if you come down that is going beyond the mid frequency range to L uh, beyond the large frequency range you can see that again the gain is dropping so the lower frequency band this is the lower frequency band that is zero to this particular point where uh, the mid mid frequency gain starting constant gain is starting so this area we call low frequency region and this particular region that is from uh, the maximum gain area to the dropping area this this particular area so this frequency range is called high frequency region so if you look at the graph the low frequency region and high frequency region if you closely look at these two areas we can see that the gain is dropping okay so this is for a practical amplifier this is the frequency response of uh, an amplifier okay so now moving towards uh, so how we are plotting this particular graph that's the next question so the thing is that how uh, if you wanted to plot this frequency versus uh, gain plot this frequency versus gain plot we will take frequency in the x-axis and uh, this uh, gain in the y-axis okay so in order to plot this particular graph uh, we need to do like we need to set an input signal to the common emitter amplifier we need to set an input signal to the common emitter amplifier then we will make the input signal as a constant i mean while well, keeping keep varying the frequency of the input signal so the voltage we set an input signal and the voltage of the input signal will be constant but we will vary the frequency of the input signal continuously and well, once we are varying the frequency of the input signal continuously we will track what will be the output signal for each frequency level so because when the frequency of the input signal is keep on varying we can get the sufficient amount of change in the output frequency output voltage v out so as i i can give you the hint like the voltage in the input side will be constant and we are varying the input frequency if i we are varying and correspondingly the output will also vary okay so each frequency we are getting a different different varying output voltage so then we will find out the gain that is gain av is equal to v out divided by v a so we are getting since the output voltage is varying for each frequency we are getting different different gains so that's how we are plotting this uh, frequency response of the amplifiers okay so that's all and uh, and the area where the frequency is dropping this area is called the roll off area so we have two roll off areas one is from the mid frequency towards the lower frequency zero the gain is dropping and also uh, from the mid frequency towards higher frequency again the gain is dropping so these two areas are called roll off area okay so now we will discuss about uh, the cutoff frequency and bandwidth of the frequency response of uh, amplifier so i just redrawn the uh, frequency response of the amplifier taking frequency in the uh, y x axis and gain uh, v out by v in uh, a v equal to v out by v, uh, v in uh, in the y axis so uh, this is nothing but uh, the frequency response of the amplifier and as you can as i told you this maximum value this constant gain over here this maximum value we called it as uh, mid fre mid frequency gain that is av mid or some textbook it is mentioned as av max okay and this particular line we can mention it as 0 db line that's the maximum gain we are getting okay and from that if you come down minus 3 db if you are coming down 1 db down the line again 2 db down the line and now 3 db down the line if you come 3 db down the line we called the, and if you draw a horizontal line cutting two points over here and over here so this line is called a minus 3 db line that is uh, coming down 3 db down the line from the maximum gain and so this line is called a minus 3 db line and where we are getting two frequency point these are the one frequency point f1 the other frequency point which cut your uh, frequency response curve that is f2 so this f1 is called lower cutoff frequency and f2 is called upper cutoff frequency okay so where the 3 minus 3 db line meeting your frequency response curve okay and this uh, minus 3 db line uh, the value of the minus 3 db line is nothing but uh, the av mid that is the maximum gain divided by root 2 or 1 by root 2 times 
uh, 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 AB mid that is maximum gain so 1 by root 2 the value is uh, 0 0.707 so we can say 0 0.707 AB mid which is nothing but 70.7 percentage of the maximum gain that is this 3 dB value okay that means the maximum gain is here somewhere but it the amplifier the this particular uh, common emitter circuit can be acted as an amplifier the acceptable range of this amplifier up to 70.7 percentage like this much uh, even we can uh, affordable gain we can consider an affordable gain up to this that's why we consider it as 70.7 percentage below that we cannot consider so that's why we are looking for a minus 3 db uh, line okay this is all about the uh, frequency so cutoff frequency this one frequency once we are drawing a horizontal line uh, by using minus 3 db down the line and that produce two points one in the left side and right side of the frequency curve that is f1 and f2 this f1 and f2 is called upper cutoff frequency f1 is lower cutoff frequency up one is the uh, uh, f2 is the upper cutoff frequency and uh, if you wanted to find out the bandwidth we can take the calculation f2 minus f1 so that will be the bandwidth of the frequency uh, frequency response okay so that's all about uh, this the bandwidth of the frequency response now uh, final thing is called uh, we are going to analyze why uh, the frequency curve look like this since we are getting a constant gain in the mid frequency and we can see that there is a drop in the gain in the left side that is the lower frequency area and also there is a drop in the upper frequency area and why the, it is having some drop uh, drop in gain in lower frequency and upper frequency and uh, in order to analyze that we need to look for the various effect of capacitors in your common emitter amplifier so as i as you can see that in this common emitter amplifier we can see that there are mainly three capacitors one capacitor is called as this capacitor c1 which is uh, the input coupling capacitor and we can see that c3 that is the output coupling capacitor and we have a bypass capacitor in the emitter side across the resistance re so there are three capacitors so let let we can explain uh, examine the effect of these capacitors uh, come uh, 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 effect of these capacitors to the gain of the amplifier so first thing is that the coupling capacitors say so effect of coupling capacitor so uh, the input coupling capacitor c1 and the output coupling capacitor c3 so these two three capacitors these two capacitors if you are looking at this uh, the capacitor has some uh, level of impedance we called it as reactance okay we we called it as reactance reactance so reactance of the capacitor that is xc is equal to we can we have an equation called xc the reactance of the capacitor xc is equal to 1 by 2 pi fc f is the frequency c is the capacitance value okay so frequency now we can see that f is the denominator team so if uh, uh, if the f that is we can write simply xc is equal to 1 by f okay so if the frequency is in the denominator term when the frequency increases what happens xc decreases okay and when uh, fc decreases when the frequency decreases uh, your capacitance uh, reactance of the capacitance xc increases so in the lower frequency range lower frequency range in the sense the frequency is decreasing okay from mid frequency towards zero uh, towards the lower frequency the frequency is decreasing the frequency is decreasing in a sense your reactance is increasing okay so when when the reactance is increasing what happens at a, at a lower frequencies uh, uh, a greater xc value exists in both the capacitor called c1 and c3 because of that there is a voltage drop across these two capacitance and that will reduce the gain that's why there is a uh, redu reduction in gain in uh, lower frequencies and these two capacitors the input coupling capacitor and the output cu coupling capacitor uh, in the higher frequency range as you know uh, frequency increases the capacitance uh, uh, the reactance of the capacitance decreases and it will act as a simply a short circuit and it will not have any effect on the high frequency range so, okay so uh, the coupling capacitor called uh, uh, input coupling capacitor as well as the output coupling capacitor which will be having an effect on the low frequency so these two capacitor is capable of reducing gain in the lower frequencies so we understand why the gain is dropping in the lower frequencies now 
we will talk about uh, the effect of bypass capacitor so bypass capacitor is the capacitor which lies across the emitter side resistance parallel to the emitter side resistance so here also uh, we have the equation like as you can see in the diagram so this is the capacitor xc and across the resistor so when the frequency increases what happens xc and it is proportional to frequency inversely proportional to frequency and lower frequency as you know frequency decreases xc value increases okay so lower frequency range this particular xc value increases and uh, here not only the uh, resistance re the xc value increases so that there is the total impedance of this particular uh, resistance area will increase and correspondingly there will be a voltage drop across this area and because of that the gain will decrease so the reason why if you look at the, the lower frequency range there is a drop in frequency this is because the coupling capacitor input coupling capacitor as well as the output coupling capacitor along with this bypass capacitor so these three capacitors are responsible for reduction in the gain in this particular frequency graph okay in the lower frequency now we will talk about why there is a reduction in gain in the upper uh, uh, frequency ranges so we have a constant gain here okay but we have a reduction in gain in the upper uh, cut uh, frequency range now we will talk about another one set of capacitance that capacitance is called junction internal transistor capacitor internal this capacitor is not visible outside this is an internal capacitor capacitance which is seen inside the transistor so uh, between the emitter and the collector we have an internal capacitance called cbc that is capacitance between base and collector and there is another one internal capacitance which exists between the base and the emitter that is called CBE. These are the two internal capacitance which cannot be seen outside the transit. Physically, it is not visible, which is the internal capacitance. Now, these two capacitance, uh, the reactance Xc, as you know, the equation Xc is really 1 by 2 pi Fc. And here, uh, when the frequency increases, F increases, so what happens? Xc decreases. When the Xc, Xc value decreases, here these two capacitors there will be shunting effect happening in the junction because of the shunting effect uh, what happen means this shunting effect will reduce the gain so the shunting effect of these two capacitance will because frequency increases reactance reduces uh, reactance reduces there will be shunting effect across the junction uh, in due to the capacitor and because of that the gain will reduce okay so this is the reason why uh, the, ga the 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 gain in the upper frequency range will be reducing or dropping okay so this is all about the frequency response of amplifier i hope you understand this thank you thank you so much for listening